Welcome to the second part of uh, the Compix tutorial. In this part, we're going to continue describing the Compix framework and we will start with an example. In earlier tutorial, we understood the different concepts that are used in Compix for building a component-based distributed applications. So we're going to look to an example now, which is, we call it a very simple example, we call it Hello World. So we said that we will build component in a hierarchical way. So we have the main component of our application, all of these running in one operating system process, main. Main will have two components. We, we call it component one and component two. And component two is going to provide a port. This port is called um, hello world port. And component one will require the port. So the interface or the service hello world is required. And we are going to connect these two components together. And what is the application is going to do? So the application is going to do the following. We are going to have a start handler. A start handler will send a message called uh, hello through the hello world port. So hello will be sent through the hello world port. And at component two, there will be a handler that handles the message um, or the event hello. In this case, it will respond by a word event. So a word event will be sent here. That is a word event. It is a hello event. And then it will be handled by the word handler. This is basically it. So as you can see here, we have um, a required port and a provided port. So this provides, component two provides the hello world port and component one requires the hello world port. So you see, we have a start event that will trigger a hello event. Hello events will trigger a world event. Great. So this is what we want to do. So to understand um, the example in detail, we need also to look to uh, the life cycle of a component. So components are basically concurrent Java objects. It's objects that are having associated with a thread in a thread pool, basically. So initially, a component will be in a passive state when it is deployed. If this component has no subcomponent as children and it gets a start event, it is going to move to an active state. And if the component has a subcomponent or a children component, then a start event should have a handler, will start basically its subcomponent, its children components. And once the children component recursively will going to start their children and once the children component have came to an active state, they will signal their parent component that they have started. And once all children of a certain component has started then the component moves to the active state. So just briefly again, if a component has no children, it moves immediately from a passive state to an active state when it gets a start event. If a component has children, it will start its subcomponents, and once they are started, it will move then to an active state. In an active state, you can immediately stop the component or you can, if the component has subchildren, there's a stop event will also stop its subcomponents and that will be done recursively until the component passivated. Okay. This life cycle is handled by 
a special interface or event interface that we call the control port. So every component has a control port and the programmer does not need to explicitly declare this control port, it is there by default. So each component provides a control port and it is we will not be show it in our diagrams. And a control port will accept start events and uh, send to a start handler, stop events send to a stop handler, and they will trigger stopped and uh, started events to the parent component. Mm. This allows component to manage life cycles. Mm. Another event that is part of the life cycle and is also supported by a control port is handling faults. So if some handler creates an exception and this exception is not caught within the handler, then this exception will be converted to a fault event. So what happens? It will not be uh, a fault event and this fault event will be sent through the control port to the parent component. So exceptions that are not caught inside the handler will be wrapped into a fault event and will be triggered on the control port. So this is uh, a summary of the interface of a control port. A control port accepts a start and a stop requests and creates stopped, started, and fault indication events or output events. There is one um, thing that we have to understand while we are initializing uh, components and is it how to pass already at the construction of the comp component how to pass parameters or initial values to a component and this is, is called the initialization phase so we are looking basically to this part of the life cycle what happened when you deploy and start a component and the problem that we want to deal with is that components sometimes need a set of parameters and this and has to trigger events based on these during the startup and we would like to make sure that the parameters are installed in a component before any events are triggered so in the complex framework you do that by the following way the parameters that you want to pass or initialize should be a subtype of an init type which is parameterized by the component that you are constructing and this will have the set of parameters that you are interested in and once you create a component in this case my component then in the constructor of the my component type or class you pass in this init object init object that encapsulates all the parameters that you need so in this case you pass an init object and then it is used here to initialize a local uh, variable called send for example uh, the rest of the code is easy it is just you can see here the control port and you always subscribe the start handler to the control port. Here is the start handler. The most important thing you have to think of is that uh, in the constructor, you should not trigger any events because these are all this initialization is done before the system, let us say, the component is active. It is still in a passive state. So do not trigger event in the constructor. Now let us go carefully through this example you remember we had a uh, main we have component one which sends hello event to component two and component two 
corresponds to to component one by sending a hello message or event okay so first have a look to um, so we have two events hello that is sent here so here you can send an hello event and here you send a world event and if you look to the hello world interface so it accepts this is a request and this is an indication so it accepts a hello event and emits uh, a world event so let us look to the source code of this step by step but the first thing we're going to do in the source code is to redefine our events and events should uh, extend the base uh, type which is called event fine so we have an we define hello event hello events extend event and it it's basically um, just have a string which is a message to that's sent with, with the event and you have a getter here to extract the message now let us look to the world event so the world event extend event again and does has nothing it just it, it has no argument it has no parameters and then we have now define our port so our port uh, accepts uh, a request event which is hello and produces an indication event which is world so this defines now we have defined our port we have defined our events so let us now look to the source code of component one component one looks like this so what we want to do we want to define component one we want to define the start handler we want to define the world handler um, yeah and we want to subscribe the handler the world handler to the hello world um, port which is uh, as you can say here it is required port this is a required port so here is our component one it extends component definition so the interesting thing that now you create a port which is which requires the hello world type okay and now there is something in complex which is basically the required port and the provide port are complementary and for this there is some um, notation is used which if you require a port then you are on the positive side of the port and if you provide the port you are on the negative side this is just uh, a notation it could have been the inverse okay so now we have a required port and what we would like to do now is to define the world handler and here is a code for the world handler so the world handler as you can see here is um, extended by just the ha handler code which just whenever it receives um, a word event it just print out component one receive the word event and the word handler has no parameters as we can see in its constructor so let us see what we do we have also defined the start handler so the start handler what does it do here is a start handler it first prints out component one started triggering hello and then after that it will create a hello event with this message hi there and it will trigger it on the control port this is the control port okay so now we have defined the start handler the world handler the port and now we have to put everything together and this is what you can see here so this is the um, initial or the constructor code for component one it prints the component has 
cre being created it subscribes the start handler the start handler on the control port you don't need to explicitly declare the control port and it subscribes the world handler into the world handler port and that's it so in a similar way now we can look to component 2 we can do it quickly so component 2 has one handler it's called the hello handler it has to subscribe to the subscribe to the hello world on the hello for uh, servicing the hello events so this is our component here is the hello hand world port this is provided and that's why you have this negative side of this port specification the hello handler you can see it here it has uh, a single um, handle that takes an event here and what does it do it prints out component to receive hello event with plus the word message and then it prints out the message contained in in the hello um, event which done by get message you remember hello events has an argument which you can it's uh, and you can get the message there that's stored in that argument and then you trigger this in the hello world port this is the triggering that's happening okay that is fine here you have the start handler again it just printed the component has started and then you subscribe to the control port and you subscribe to um, the hello world port so this is the same as last time now we put everything together and this is done by creating a main component this main component will have will create two sub components one is called component one and component two component one of type component one the other is type component two as you can see here so what you do is you use this is important this is how you create components you give the component type and you give some initialization and in our case we don't have any initialization in for the components that's component one component two and then you create the channel between the two components and and you provide the directionality you will say component one is has a require require interface and component two has a provided interface so this is the main um, component in our system running in one operating system process and this is the code to start the whole thing Java starts always with main and what you do is you call the complex framework with the main component the main component itself then this uh, creates everything else and and once everything finished you have also this shutdown shutdown you shouldn't really use it if you don't want to shut down the system okay so that's what we have so if this happens this is the following it's going to happen the order you start with main the first thing main is created that happens from the main component then component one is created component two is created then component one will actually print started triggering hello component two trigger started and then component two when it received the hello message is going to send a message called hi there with a the message hi there and then component one would receive the hello world and everything will end so complex runtime creates and starts main main recursively starts component one and component two component one start handler triggers hello event this is handled by component two which trigger world event which is handled by component one okay this is an example thank you